Vermont is 2% Christian and, you know, being raised, uh, only going to church for funerals and weddings. Um, this was just, it's like one of those things where if you don't know, you don't know. And so the name of Jesus was a name in my mouth that was derogatory. Um, and, and I didn't even know that he was a man. Um, and so I, you know, most of my childhood was spent, um, trying to gain my father's approval. And, you know, it was passed down from my grandpa to my dad that, that, uh, were men and were strong. Um, and that was so hard for me because I was just such an emotional guy. I just wanted to let it out and I didn't know how. So Mm. yeah, I struggled a lot, struggled a lot as a kid. Yeah, and nobody saw what was going on with you. And then you reached this incredible low point at 16 where you put a gun in your mouth. What was happening? Um, You know, I had thought that nobody loved me anymore. Um, And you know that, that, that saying where you hear, you see your life flash before your eyes. Um, I did. I saw the funeral. I saw the line out the door. I saw my mom find me. And I just couldn't go through with it. You know, it was like, I, I, whatever it was, I was like, I, I can't do this. I can't put that kind of stress on my family, on my mom. Um, and even on my dad, as much as him and I struggled uh, growing up. But at 18 years old, you know, that's when I turned to, to cocaine and alcohol and sex and all the things to try to um, take this pain away, you know. And I just wanted to share. I just wanted to, 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 to come clean. I just wanted to be honest, but I didn't know how. Hmm. And you didn't know if you had those safe places in your life. And, you know, that put you on a 15 year journey of addiction, drugs and alcohol. And then something happened to a really good friend. Tell me about him. Yeah, Ryan, uh, he was my best friend uh, since 2009. And uh, him and I uh, uh, met and fell into each other. And turns out that his love for drugs was as much as mine. And so we just spent this, you know, 10 years of toxic time together. Um, and, uh, and then, and then his life was taken by, uh, by an overdose, um, in 2017. And so losing Ryan for me was, was a really, really hard thing. And, and again, you would think that something like that would help me stop, right? It, it would be like, that's enough. I've lost my best friend. I can't do anymore. Um, but that's still even losing Ryan, uh, wasn't enough to change the way that I was living. Mm. And, you know, you, you moved to at Nashville, you wanted to launch a country music career. That's, you know, really a fresh start wanting to change your life, but you were still, you know, those habits still had a hold of you. You're still using, you're still driving drunk. So what was, why couldn't you change when you wanted to so much? Um, you know, it was that constant feeling of like, of like, is this it? Is this, is this really it? Is this what I, is this making it? Is this what I want my life to be? And so I kept asking myself that over and over and over again. Um, and it wasn't until uh, I had reached this point where I just said, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of living this way. I don't have it all together. I, I'm just, there's got to be something more. I knew I was made for something more. And um, it was the fall of 2019. And so I had done the Nashville thing for a year and it was the fall of 2019. I got a, a phone call from a family from Vermont that God had moved down to Nashville a year and a half before I even got here. Um, and they asked me if I'd come to a meal with them. And I said, yes. And that night, it was a Saturday night. They asked me if I would go to church with them on Sunday morning. Um, and so November 10th, 2019, um, is when I got baptized. Um, and shortly after just said, here I am, Lord, (laughs) send me. And all these things just started leaving me. Um, my addictions and my language was, was awful. And my drinking, I was, you know, 17 beers a night. Um, and so, yeah, I, 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 I am living proof that he's real. And these changes, uh, only happened when I accepted Christ and said, yes, Lord, uh, I give it all up. I give it all to you. So tell me about that moment, because you, you walk into church, you weren't really raised in this environment, and you, you tell yourself, I want to sing this music for the rest of my life, but you don't really, like, I don't even know if God's real. So what was going on with you at that church service? Um, I honestly felt like Jim Carrey and Liar Liar, where I'm like, the pen is blue, you know, I'm melting, like inside my, my, my I'm like mushy, and I'm like wanting to be emotional, and, but I'm also still hard and manly on the outside, and I'm like, what is happening to me? 
But I literally got mad at God. And I just said, if you're even real, take this away. If you're even real, then do this for me. If they're who you say that you are, do this for me. And, um, and he did. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> and it's crazy. And it's crazy. He did. So, yeah, it's all been hard to believe. I think that's the hardest thing for me is, is um, but here's the beautiful thing. It's the mystery of God. He's such a mystery, and it's the mystery that keeps me coming back to him for more. Huh. Because I knew what the drugs did. I knew what the sex did. I knew what the drinking and driving did. I knew what all those things did and where they led me. But I don't know what God's going to do, you know, tomorrow, to this afternoon. I have no idea what he's going to do. And so um, that mystery has kept me going. That mystery has kept me uh, uh, following him. I have been a, a Christian a lot longer than you, and I still don't know the answer to those questions. So I think that's super normal. But okay, so what's different about you today than you? It's only a few years ago. What, what's changed? Yeah, um, well, le beyond the fact that my language has cleaned up, beyond the fact that I feel better, um, that I'm just uh, more honest and, and vulnerable, I think the coolest thing about this transformation is that I'm finally able to tell the truth, mm. is that I'm finally able to come clean after all these years, you know, and, and when I'm on stage um, and when I'm in front of people now, I'm not ashamed to say that I had a gun in my mouth. I'm not ashamed to say that I used drugs for, for 16, 17 years of my life and ran away from all my problems. I'm not ashamed because the change is real and it's really happened. And so that I know if it, if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. Um, and you just have to surrender. You just have to give it all up to him and, and watch him do the work instead of striving and trying to do it on your own. Because I, I'm, I can also test to that, that uh, my whole life, I mean, it, it didn't work my whole life until I gave it all up. So I love the fact that you just said you could tell the truth, because I think a lot of times people think if I become a Christian, I'm going to be a big fake, you know, and yet you became more honest. That's so beautiful. Um, yeah. You know, I just think about someone watching right now who, who feels trapped in addiction. You know what that's like. You want to change, but you can't. You couldn't. What would you say to them? What hope would you give them? You know, I, um, this, is such a, this is such a hard but beautiful question. And I would just say, um, ask him for yourself. Just ask him. Just, just try it. I dare you. Just ask him. Say, God, can you take this away from me? Can you help me? Can you fix me? Can you, can you pull these drugs away from me? Can you pull this addiction away from me? And, and, and I had to do that from an honest place of not just here, but here. And so when I think he knows when you really mean it, when you really mean it here and you say it from here, that's when things start changing. That's when all of a sudden it's not just lip service to God. It's not just, oh, I think I want to change. It's no, I really need to change. God, can you change me? Can you help me? Oh. And he will. I promise. That's so powerful. And I see the sincerity in your eyes. And I know you, you talk about this in rehab centers. You talk about it in prisons. So thank you for sharing your story. You know, you've launched some new music now. So this, this uh, country music thing is happening. Your debut single is Who I Am. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, um, Who I Am is, has become this declaration. It's just become uh, this song that I could sing from you know, the lowest of valleys and the highest of mountaintops. Um, because I think here's the, here's the thing. Uh, I still get depressed. Um, I still have awful days. I still have lots of temptations and deal with a lot of that uh, stress and things. Um, and I, so I think that that's kind of a false from, from the onlookers or a non-Christian standpoint. It's like, oh, your life is fixed and isn't that good for you? Uh, no, uh, actually following Jesus has been one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my entire life. So who I am, um, who I am in the eyes of the Father, who I am, his love set free. Who I was, I left at the altar. I am yours, Lord, I believe. And these are words that just came to me and I wrote them down and uh, I sing them almost every day uh, to remind myself that I'm a child of the Most High God. Well, I love that song. Those lyrics are beautiful. We're going to hear your music actually coming up. But Ben, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen with you next and what that mysterious God is going to do next. Amen. Thank you so much, Cheryl.